you're looking at, we've got two purebred breeds here, Jacob and Navajo Churro sheep, and then we do our own, I'm my own designer breed of crossbred sheep. The Jacob's um, intro? The, the, these white, more border lustery looking things. Uh, started out actually, um, we don't advocate crossing the Jacob and the Churro together, but what we did is we got a border luster ram, um, and it was some original girls that just were not throwing the breed quality that we wanted. And this is my way of justifying keeping them. Uh, they produce meat lambs for us, but it's still really mild lean meat. Um, and I love the crosses so much that I consider, I call it my designer breed. They're by the Lester's. I have my own breed. You know what, that people do that, that you can kind I know. of, you can like use a little dogs. bit. We talked to a farmer in, uh, Matt DeVader, he farms in, in Kansas, and he's got Katahdins, and he's got his own little mixture he's got going. Yeah. A little bit more pest resistance here, a little bit more drought tolerance there, well, a little more cold hardiness, and he just got yeah, up. Well, these it's like baking a cake. They grow really fast, so this guy is the same age as the Jacobs, and you can see how much bigger he is. Love the fiber, the hand spinners still like it, great hides, and... Sadly, I like them so much that I end up keeping a lot of the ewes, so I have a whole flock of ewes that I breed. But, but they're, they're nice. But, I mean, what we really do are the Jacob and Navajo Churro. And, yeah, again, we don't advocate crossing them because they're both so great on their own. It just does not benefit either breed to do that. Um, I have to tell you, this is my first experience with Jacobs. We have oh, is it? Yes. So it, can you tell me a little bit about that, about that breed? Yeah, they're a very old breed. Um, they're named after Jacob in the Bible in Genesis 30 where he makes a deal with his father-in-law Laban to keep all the spotted and striped sheep and goats. And actually that's the first uh, reference to selective breeding anywhere in written history. Are they, were they really the sheep Jacob had? Unlikely, but it's a nice story. And they did probably come from the Middle East originally. So it is possible. There's some it's sort possible. of legitimacy to the thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they are a very, very old breed. Um, what we raise here in the U.S. are called American Jacob sheep. Yes. Most recently, they came from England, where for several centuries they were used as like lawn ornaments on the great estate. They called them park sheep. And they weren't all that worried about keeping them pure at that point because they just wanted the decoration with the four horns and the spots. So then they came to this country. There was a couple import importations in the early 1900s and then in the, in the 1960s. And what we have today are all pretty much from that. So we have a big enough gene pool. We don't really, we did save semen for the Fort Collins Thing. Oh, you did? Yeah, on both breeds. Uh, and that was about the time that hoof and mouth, mouth was devastating England, and they were really concerned about what happens if it shows up on one farm, because they had a huge, you know, within, if you were in, I don't remember the acreage, I mean, the miles, they would take any flock, you know, and they were very concerned about it, so, um, but we don't take, generally. Take any flock and put them, yeah, put eliminate them. them. Yeah. Like, so far as had it, somebody. Mm -hmm.